Today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up a project inside of Avid Media Composer, woo! Hello guys, what's up? My name is Steve Douglas, as you guys can probably see from this little guy right here. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up a project inside of Avid and go ahead and set up a few bins that'll prepare you for whenever you start to ingest and import your footage, which I'll be going over next week in both Premiere and Avid. But today we're just gonna lay a solid foundation for bins, project folders, show you guys how you can get things prepped and ready for when you wanna start cutting. So whenever you launch Avid on your computer, this should be one of the first windows you see. You may occasionally have a dialog box that opens up that says these plugins aren't working or you have these options enabled would you like to have this, etc., etc.? But once you get to this point, that's where you guys can start to follow along. You have private, shared, and external, and this really just dictates where your project is saved. I almost 99% of the time I'm using external, mainly because I can choose exactly where I want my project file to be, and I have more control over that. Now, if I'm working on a laptop setup or I'm working off a of personal drive, maybe I would use private or shared, but nine times out of 10, I'm gonna use external, even more than nine times out of 10. First thing you're gonna do, click new project. Now in here, you'll want, just like I said in Premiere, you'll want to pick a project name that you're very comfortable with sticking to for the length of the project. The name of the film can change, the titles can change within the project, all of that stuff can change, but it's good to keep the project file name consistent because it saves you a lot of headache later whenever things come, you know, comes time to relink this or transcode that, blah, 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 blah. It's just a good idea to keep this project name consistent. So for this, I'm just gonna call this Avid Tutorial because I'm gonna use this project in the future to continue showing you guys how to use Avid. I shoot in 1080p 23.976 on my Canon 70D for all these tutorials. Because of that, I'm just gonna keep that pretty simple. That's a pretty solid standard and pretty much anybody using a DSLR is gonna be shooting in that mode. Maybe they're using 720p, but that's not a bad thing. If that's all you got, use it, utilize. It's not the camera, it's what you put in front of it. You'll wanna make sure that that's set to whatever your camera matches or whatever you would like your project to be. These are things that you can change later, but it's a good idea to just get them on point the first time. You can change a few of these. You can change it to RGB 709. It really just comes down to the way that you're going to be displaying things, but this is a pretty standard color space that you probably won't need to change. If you are by chance pulling in information from film, like you, you shot it on, you know, 16, 35 millimeter and you converted it to digital, you can select film, which will give you a whole host of options for how to cut things within Avid and different things that you can do in order to maintain that film aesthetic. So whenever it comes time to reprint or relink to the original footage and recut. That's something that this program can set you up for. I'm not super versed in that, so I won't pretend to know a whole lot about it. And then you can also create presets for projects. So if you use this program a lot for cutting tutorial videos like this, or you shoot real estate footage or what have you, you can go ahead and create these presets. That way it's a little easier for you to manage and use. I generally don't cut my YouTube videos in Avid, which is why there isn't a preset for that. I cut pretty much everything else in Avid. YouTube is the only real thing that I don't use Avid for. So once you have all of those things selected, go ahead and hit OK. and then you you'll see that your project has appeared here where you can see all of your project settings. The really nice thing is that you can create, I'm actually gonna pull this up really quick, on my main two terabyte hard drive, if you go here, Avid Projects, that is where this information is stored. And if you open this up, you can see there isn't much in here yet. As soon as you launch the project, this folder starts to fill up with bins and metadata and different folders. Do not try to touch this folder until you, are, you become an expert and you really know what you're doing. Because if you mess with this folder, it can devastate the rest of your project. But just so you know, that's where it's kept. And it's a good idea to back up that project at the end of every working session, just because project files in Avid tend to corrupt. And that's only because it's used to handling mass amounts of data. The way that it codes is a little differently. Every, it's a very fine machine. It's like driving a Toyota Camry, which you can beat up a little bit versus a Mercedes or a Ferrari. It drives awesomely is one of the best cars ever, but the smallest thing can really throw a wrench into its entire system. So it's best to maintain backups and maintain project file backups. Just a word of advice. Trust me, you'll be glad you did it. So when you select your project, it'll highlight in blue. You can go ahead and hit OK, and it's going to launch the project. Did you guys know that you can use the link down below to visit Weebly and save 10% off of your first subscription? You can have HD backgrounds, super easily modifiable websites, and I just use way too many words to describe one of my favorite, favorite companies, Weebly. They're an exceptional company. They have great customer service, super easy websites and templates to work with. And like I already said, you can save 10% by visiting the link down below. Visit Weebly. They're freaking awesome, and I can't highly recommend them enough. Check them out. Now, if I could ask you guys to bear with me just a little bit, I am used to working in Avid on a two screen system. So some things may appear on one screen, so it'll take me a second to pull them back over. This is your main program window. This is where you'll find pretty much everything. If you're using a multi-screen setup, it extends onto other screens. It's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to it. So similar to Premiere, you'll have your project window, which is where you'll have all of your bins, your folders. It's also where you can adjust a lot of options and settings. You can create custom settings in here. I'll do a whole video about creating custom settings in the coming weeks. This is one way to access your 
effects tab. I'll go over that in a segment as well. Although that will be several segments simply because there are so many effects that work in so many different ways. Format, this is where I was telling you guys that you can actually go back and you can change the format of your project mid project. It is a good idea, like I said, to get it from the beginning because that kind of sets up things for what you want to do later. I don't tend to touch this super often unless I'm working with really, really high res footage like six or sometimes even 8K. You'll always start off with an avid tutorial bin. Now what I do nine times out of 10 is I take that bin, you can click on it with your mouse and just rename it sequences because you will always need a sequences bin. Now as you progress and if you have to create a bunch of different versions, sometimes you'll want to create a folder and create different names for your bins that include your sequences. Like maybe you want online sequences for distribution sequences, what have you. Things can always just like Premiere get as organized as you would like them to be. And the more organized you are and the easier it is to understand, the better because you never know when you're going to have to hand this project off to somebody else and that will save so much time if your stuff is easy and organized to read as well as organized for you if you can't find the stuff that you want to find one your client's going to be unhappy two you're going to feel kind of uh, like at a, at a mishap and you're also just going to get frustrated with the project but if everything's organized one it keeps the project so much smoother and two it reduces the risk of corruption because then you don't have files pulling from every which way and direction if any of you guys watch my premiere video one of the things that i really like to do in avid as well is i like to create a new bin called adjustments and that's because pretty much everything that i cut in avid will get a letterbox i letterbox pretty much all of my work to a certain degree i know that sometimes it's not appropriate to do that but i really enjoy the aesthetic i really think it brings in a tighter composition i just grew up watching movies that use letterbox all the time pretty much every movie i've i watched as a kid was letterbox and so it, it's more of a personal thing i really like it and that's my creative decision not here to defend that though but i do create an adjustments bin inside of avid for that next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to create a raw footage bin now you can capitalize it or you can leave it lowercase raw footage now because avid is a pro editor i often will pull in footage to be transcoded and i will be going over that like i said next week importing footage and getting a project set up in that manner don't worry too much about why you call this raw footage you want to create another bin called raw audio and in there you can store dialogue takes that you took from maybe a zoom or a lovely air mic you should only really put audio in here that you intend to sync up with video because you'll have another bin that's set to the side for audio stuff later i also like to create a sfx bin this is where you can store sound effects that you may find inherently you also want a music bin and this is where you can import music all of that i like to create a new folder and call this just sound and what you can do is you can grab your bins by clicking on the little symbol drag it down to the folder there we go grab music drag it in and boom i will also create just for the sake of it a sequences folder and i will also create a raw footage Folder. Now, one of the benefits of creating these folders is that as I progress through my project, if I discover, oh, I need to modulate something, those top level folders still tell me everything that's a raw piece of footage is going to be inside of this folder. It just may be further organized inside of this bin. So you may have an import setting where you have to import from 15 different cards. So what I'll often do is I'll create a bin. It's called day one card six or card three that way when i import my footage put it in the raw footage folder i know all my raw footage is in here that way i can also quickly hide everything once those folders get and bins get numerous and everything is organized in this way usually whenever i import using day one card three or day one card seven etc etc i won't have a raw footage bin but because most of this tutorial stuff i'm going to keep fairly simple for you guys i'm actually not going to have that when you delete a bin you will have a trash folder now it is important to remember that whenever you delete a bin you can undo it immediately however if you right click empty trash it is gone from your project and you probably can't recover it without backstepping in your project or going to an older version or re-importing a raw bin it's a whole process so be sure that you want to get rid of something whenever you choose to remove it from the trash just a word of advice so we have our sequences we have our footage bin we have our sound bin another thing that i like to include is a vfx bin when you work with ab you're probably using professional grade workflows you're probably doing a little bit of bounce in bounce out between visfx departments color departments Departments, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really nice to go ahead and have a VFX bin ready. That way, any shots that you have to import at a later date that have VFX that you then need to place back in your timeline, you can do with ease because every, it has a place to go and you don't have to worry about footage going missing. It's really nice, it's really awesome. And the more VFX you have, the more organized you should get. One last thing that I really like to include within my Avid projects is a color bin. And the reason that I choose to include this is because I'm a colorist. And one of the really, really nice things about Avid, especially if you guys are using the subscription model, is that you have access to Avid Symphony. Avid Symphony is a really robust color grading program that's baked into Avid and works in sort of the same way that a plugin would. It expands the currently existing color settings and really allows you to dial in your color corrections. And most of the time, unless you wanna do something really, really, really high quality 
with color using DaVinci Resolve, you can do 95% of your color corrections and color edits right within Avid, which saves you time, it saves you the money of going through an entire workflow, it, it saves you on many forefronts, and it does an exceptional job because it's drawing right from the raw footage just as DaVinci would without all of the hassle. And with color and adjustments, I create another folder called adjustments, and I take the adjustments bin and the color bin, and I place those into the adjustments folder. And that pretty much sets up my project. That pretty much has everything that I think I may need to get going and get rolling. And that's pretty much everything that I do to get my project set up even before I receive footage. That way, whenever I receive all the footage, I already have a solid foundation in place and I'm ready to get rolling and I don't have to spend a lot of time setting this stuff up. It just increases your efficiency, gets you ready, and prepares you to go. I thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you could, please hit that like button down below. Share this stuff with your friends, your family, and anybody you think may be interested in filmmaking, editing. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Oh,